Hey guys, in this episode of the Razorback Screencast, I think we're going to finally attach these uh, infrared lighting arrays to the machine. Uh, right now they're just kind of floating in space and we probably want to take care of that. So it's just going to be a case of making a couple simple brackets. Um, we can probably make the bracket once and rely on some simple symmetry to copy it over to the other side for us. So let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to grab a cube and start off here. So I'm thinking I'll probably start the bracket off as sort of a plate and then break it up into sort of a Y shape. So let's start off with sort of a thin substrate. Let's go with uh, 0.192, seems like a good thickness. And then we just move it over here to one side of the machine. And once we've moved it over, we can convert it to an editable object and find some symmetry to place it in. So we have a few symmetry objects already probably look for one and piggyback onto it, like perhaps the symmetry object that these are contained in. So there's a symmetry object for red lights. In my, uh, in my vision, these would create sort of a red glow. Even though they're infrared lights, um, the red glow would look better and people would get the idea. So I don't think there's much danger in making them red lights. Okay, so we have uh, two objects there, but they do seem to be rotating my cube a little bit, probably due to the deformer. So this whole thing is being bent, so I don't really want that. I could do like sort of a restriction on it or, some, or something of that sort, but I think in this case I'm just going to duplicate the red light symmetry, delete the stuff that's under it, and rename this uh, red lights bracket. So now we can sort of work on it on our terms. So we have this face here that I'm just sort of going to extract, but before I do that, let's just see how the rest of the cube looks. Is it in the right spot? It could probably bolt on right there. On the other side, that sort of leaves it uh, sort of unknown because this this item that we're trying to bolt it onto is not symmetrical but in this case I'm gonna allow it I don't think that matters very much it's kind of hard to see anyway so we can just bring this out a little bit and then extrude it scale it up a little bit maybe And here's how we're going to split it into a Y shape. We extrude it and scale it up. So now I'm going to extrude it a little bit and scale it down. And that gives us one, two, three faces to deal with. So now I can grab these two faces and extrude them. And it gives us sort of a bracket that we can use. We can also, uh, you know, scale this up if we wanted to, to sort of give it more of a spread. And when we do that, in order to avoid this stretched look, we might want to just select those points and scale them as well so that they look plausible, because right now they just look like we stretch them. And if it doesn't look that, look that way, it'll probably give us a better delivery of the effect. And so we can see here that, you know, the way our bracket comes out, um, it doesn't really line up properly on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to select this face on the top and use the normal move tool to move it back down a little bit. And then I can do something similar down here. And 
what I want to do is isolate just this object so I'm going to say visible and then say invisible for everything else just because I want to work on this object alone and I'm just going to tweak it until the thickness looks right the, the structure looks okay just sort of matches what I've got in my head about how it should look so I'm wondering if we created some extra geometry. It looks like we did. So for the last few episodes, my extrude tool has had create caps turned on. I'm just going to turn that off right now. Uh, when we extruded these two guys outward, it created caps right there because we told it to. So the easiest way to fix that is with a rectangular selection. You just select these polygons and, you know, just in case I haven't been clear about it, these are inside of the object. So it's bad geometry that's that's not really supposed to be allowed. So I'm just going to press delete and we get smoother font shading on the top and bottom. And what we can probably do is now that we have these uh these sort of stanchions the way we want them, we can turn everything back on and imagine how they connect. So they're coming out really far right now and they're also not lining up perfectly. So to fix that, I'm wondering if we should um, sort of nudge them in the right direction. So I'm actually thinking of creating like a loop selection and doing a cut here and here. And what that would allow me to do is to easily select the polygons at the end right there and move them as you can see without really disrupting the way this bracket moves it sort of give give it somewhere to bend as we sort of just push it in the direction that we want it in so I'm actually going to pull them back in a little bit like that and then push it down until it touches the area and I'm going to do that down here as well but down here I can probably move it a little bit more before doing that and you push it down until it sort of touches the point that you want now the fong shading is messing up a little bit but I'm not worried because I know Cinema 40's default fong shading is 80 degrees and I usually model to 60 so when you switch it to 60 things sharpen up a little bit more so we can move this one in a little bit more because we see we need some space to extrude it out. And so now we can just extrude. And until it's roughly square, and we see we have a much better spot where we can sort of attach these. So I'm just going to sink it in. The cool thing is that we still have the original coordinate system of the cube we started with. Um, that's that's one of the advantages of rotating the primitive that you start with when sort of modeling something because you're you're rotating that primitives coordinate system when you do that and it means that if down the line you need to uh, you need to sort of rotate something at a specific angle chances are it's already going to be at the angle you want whereas you can see in this case down here I'm having to rotate this anyway because uh, the the curved infrared light itself is at a funny angle so before we get any further we should probably check just to make sure that our steering isn't going to intersect this because if it does it would really be unpleasant and it does so I'm not really sure what to do about that but we have to do something I guess what I would say is that we need to move the entire cube assembly forward. I really should have checked for this first. So with that selected I'm going to grow my selection until I have everything that I want selected. And then I'm just going to push this part forward so it gets out of the way. So it looks like we can push forward pretty far there. And it gets it out of the way of the steering. What about the other side? I 
Yeah, the other side has no problems. It almost makes me wonder if these should not be symmetrical. Because if it wasn't symmetrical, this side could remain like this. And then we would just push the bracket forward for the other side. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get some asymmetry going on. So we have the material, the bracket on the other side correct for this side. Oh, wait a sec. No, we need to move it forward here as well. Okay, so that's, that's not a problem. We can just move both of them forward. Just move it forward until it gets out of the way, like right there. And then we can start to adjust this again. So we probably want to move it in to give us a little bit of stretch there. You see how that works? And then, so it looks okay here. Looks okay on that side. It's not intersecting anything too badly. And then we can start moving some loops around. So I'm going to go back to my Kayama slide plugin and just move that loop down a little bit more to tighten it up and do the same thing down here. And then we can do a cut right there. And again, because our coordinate system is roughly the same, we can just sort of do a gentle movement right there. And we can do a cut wherever we need to move it out of the way. So in this case, I'm just sort of maneuvering it around itself almost. And once we have these in place like this, we can actually soften the way that looks by just sliding it back and forth a few times. So slide it to that edge and then down here. And you can see it really softens it up. Also, in these places where we've made one cut to move the bracket out of the way, we can really easily do a bevel operation to split it into a pair of edges, and it 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 usually flows pretty nicely when you do that. So I'm just going to move that down to soften it up a little bit, easier transition, and then I'm going to split those. So now our bracket looks kind of weird, but you know, we've we've discovered that it, it almost has to look that way for us to uh, do this the way we want to. So, just thinking about how this looks in general, and I think it looks okay, but we would definitely want the edges of this bracket rounded off like we've been doing with most of our other brackets. So I can just select those four edges and bevel them slightly. And that takes care of most of the work right there. What we would need to do is check where they hit this part here and just make sure that looks okay. So I'm going to select that object again and sort of see if we can't shuffle things around. So all of a sudden this seems really cramped. If we were to select these points and sort of... That doesn't work really well. Let's move these edges of the cube away and look at it on the far side. So you can move it until it just meets over here and that's fine. And I guess it just sort of intersects right there. I don't love how it looks, but I, I don't want to dwell on this. I don't want to spend more time than we need to. This is one of those details where you might spend a lot of time on it and no one might even notice. So, just smoothing it out a little bit. 
and we have the bracket there and the steering no longer intersects just double check this side although it should be fine yeah it looks good so I'll set the steering back to zero and now that we have this bracket the next thing to do is to put a couple bolts on it. Um, so let's just use regular hex bolts. So we just modeled one down here. So we can just copy that po polygon object, go back to our bracket, paste it right in here and make the bolt a child and then we can sort of zero out its coordinates down here so we have that bolt in our in our reach and again you know because it's sort of is taking in the coordinate system for the most part we probably don't have to do any fancy constraints or anything of that sort so I'm just going to shorten that because we don't actually have to show it penetrating anything. And we can probably move the axis like that and rotate it as well. I was just using the hotkey L. I believe that's new in R13 slash R14. It's a, need a bigger bolt, maybe that big. And going to make an instance of it. And so we can move the instance down here. And then we just have to position them correctly. So for positioning like this, I usually like to put my view halfway in the object. So I can actually see what I'm doing. And just sort of position it like that. It just has to look good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we can just press O and go to the other bolt, do something similar. It's one of the times when you're glad about the clipping plane getting in your way. It makes it really easy to jump inside of an object and do something like this and now that that's on the correct plane we can just make sure it's centered on the bracket and that looks pretty good so you know there's some other enhancements we can do to this to make it look better one of the things that immediately comes to mind is deleting this face right here and then trying to select the boundary loop. So there we go, I got it in one shot. I can just deselect those edges there. So I got the entire boundary of the object in one selection. So now that I have that, I can do a, uh, a bevel. I'll do two subdivisions, and I just want to do a really subtle bevel that we might get a nice shine off of. Seems like overkill. I think one subdivision does the job. So now that we have that, we can just remove all the end gons and just make sure we didn't get any extra triangles. It usually does it where you have three edges meeting like this. So what I usually do in that case is I just average the points out using the weld tool. And if it happened on one side, it definitely happened on the other. Again, I'm just averaging out the points. And so to take one last look at this object, I'm just going to isolate it again. And we see that it looks like we have the same issue down here. And R13 and R14, you can actually just hold whatever shortcut you have for the select tool. And then you're still on the weld tool when you release. So I can press and hold, select, click. Press and hold, select, click. That makes pretty quick work of it. 
And because I deselected all the edges here, it's not affecting that. You know, if we want it to be thorough, we can just close that polygon hole. And then kill the end gons so we get proper polygons there. Speaking of details, no one is going to notice. And, you know, we have pretty good looking bracket. Sure, the fong shading is a little strange right here, but if we really wanted to be thorough about an object like this, we can just select these uh, faces, you can use whatever method to select these, and then you can just do an extrude inner to sort of level off the fong. So as soon as we do an extrude inner to get that extra row of geometry, you can look at the mirrored side. Fong shading looks a lot, a lot better, a lot more robust. But uh, I didn't really think it looked bad enough in the first place, so I'm just going to leave it. So we have more brackets. I think that's it. I think in the next episode we'll uh, probably look at the tires or maybe start coloring it. I'm not sure about the tires. I'm thinking these will do most of their work on the street, but they'd, they'd want off-road capability as well. I, mean, I, I used to ride a sport bike every day as my uh, commuter vehicle, and every so often you got to go on a dirt road while uh, visiting a friend or going to a job site, and, uh, you know, street tires on sport bike platforms like this handle the dirt okay, as long as you're not trying to do any sort of high-performance riding. Uh, so it would be interesting to see if we can model some tires that have sort of an all-terrain thread, all-terrain tread on them. Um, not quite street, not quite dirt. Might need to do some research on that before we tackle that, though. So... I'm pretty happy with the modeling at this stage. There's a lot of other details we can add, but I'd like to get to some rendering and some texturing. So maybe in the next video, we can start to tackle those things and we can sort of address some of the other details that we've left out as we go along. For instance, uh, these are supposed to be the batteries, but they're just cubes. We never really figured out what they would look like. Uh, this is the flywheel, and it's just sort of a low-poly casing of some sort right now. Uh, these blades are just kind of floating here. There's nothing to hold them. But these are some of the kinds of details that I think I'm okay with leaving out for now, and we can probably start working on those details after we start texturing things a little bit more. So... I hope you enjoyed this installation, and until next time, see you.